Late last night we arrived in Gijón, Spain, after crossing the 305 nautical miles from France. We are not really sure what we expected to arrive to, but a buzzing festival, loud music and lots of people wasn't really it. However, what a welcome. The celebratory mood we were in was echoed throughout the city as they celebrated their local fishermen's festival, Sima Villa. The folk were merry, the drinks plenty and happiness radiated throughout the streets. We are Becca and Zach, a couple who recently, after years of dreaming, bought ourselves a beautiful 40-foot Colvick Victor sailboat. Life is short and the world is wide and there are so many lessons to be learned. Laughs shared, people met, adventures had, and nautical miles to be sailed. And this is our way of sharing it all with you. Welcome to the Tailey. Bloody doing it. <laughs> It was quite the contrast in the sound of the wind, waves and our prop spinning we had for the last little while. We'll be staying put here for the next few days in order to catch up on sleep, boat work and some admin jobs that have got put aside whilst crossing Biscay. So we have checked in with the marina, paid for a few nights. We're thinking two nights, but we might add on another night depending on the weather. It's a really nice marina. It's kind of funny because each pontoon is on its own little kind of gangway and locked door. So it's super secure. But if you look, that's where Taylor is. And then to get to the office, you have to walk all the way down there, round. And the, the actual office is that building there, but there's no bridge across. So it is a little bit of a way, but luckily when we were at the boat, a guy came over in a little boat and took us across, so that's nice. But I got a really good feeling about this place, the sun is out. That's where we came in yesterday, and the marina is just over there. Pretty cool. How does it feel being back on firm land? Feels good. Yeah? Yeah. It'd be nice when we get to anchor yeah, somewhere. It's nice being in a marina and in a city, but... Yeah. Got a few days to rest up and do some jobs. Yeah, and it changed the oil. It's been on my mind for so long. Yeah. It's one thing we keep putting off, but... The day is the day. The day is the day. I'm going to do it and I'm probably going to get filthy. <laughs> so I'm going to be changing the oil out. I've got 9 litres. Well, I've got 10 litres here, but I only need to use 9 litres for the engine that we've got at the moment. So I'm going to be putting in 9 new litres of engine oil. And whilst I'm doing that as well, I'm also going to be changing the oil filter as well. Because that's what you should do when you change oil, is to change the filter as well. It's been something that's been a little bit overdue. We're a little bit past the engine hours, which you should be doing an engine oil change at. It's not the end of the world. I just want to say thank you to Stuart from Great Oos, who just before we left Mayflower Marina in Plymouth, rushed down, was it eight hours? Something like that to come and drop off a load of service parts where we were going to go because the ones that we were going to get had gone to a different place by mistake but he is an absolute legend so thank you Stuart. I'm just about to run the engine temperature and then I'm going to pump out all the old oil, replen it, check that it's at the right level on the dipstick and also replace this as well after I put out all the old oil. The engine's now nice and warm. I'm gonna start to change all the oil out. So we've got a pump here on ours, which makes it a little bit easier. It's already pretty on there, and it goes all the way down to the sump down there. So there's a valve here that I'm gonna be turning on, and I'm gonna be pumping using this to drain up all of the oil. Would you mind getting me some uh, cloths, please? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Oh, this is quite hard work. So that is all the oil in there now. There we go. Now I just need to put the new filter on that the old one's been removed and just smear some oil around the seal there. So I need to go on here and then once it makes contact, do a three quarter turn. So it's made contact and the sole diesel sign is there. So. We need it to be right around the other side, so another, oh, uh, about the half, and then the last bit, I think I'm going to need a hand. It's not going anywhere. Now to fill her up. Oh, this could be fun. It's just made this, I've given it a really good clean and dried it all out so we haven't got any water on the inside. So I'm hoping this is going to stop me from spilling so much, so. Who needs a funnel? Engine oil and filter replaced, we cracked over the bottle of Prosecco to celebrate crossing the Bay of Biscay. 
Whoa, that really went. Yeah. I got this bottle from work when I left. Oh, it's come like a full circle, hasn't it? Yeah. Cheers, Cheers to crossing the Bay of Biscay. And getting to another country. And getting to two countries in a week. The next few days went a bit like this. We slowed down a ton. We wandered the city streets. We spelt it wrong. This place really is quaint and lovely. There's lots of old buildings with a lot of colour on them and then lots of side streets. I like this like, door here, it's like bright red. And, yeah, like, it's really lovely. Yellow building coming up. And there's so many narrow winding streets which have loads of restaurants and coffee shops down them. Put away our dry washing, clean the salt off the boat. Picked up some food and almost had our camera stolen. And after all the celebrations, music and sound of traffic, people and fast living, we felt the familiar pull to head on to a quieter place. Bye Gijon. You're really nice. We're going about seven, eight nautical miles just outside of Gijon to another marina. But we're gonna wait out some of the strong winds which are forecast for the next three or four days or so. We're going to this marina instead of staying there because this one's a good bit cheaper from what we can find online and the area around it looks a lot prettier and still like not that the city's really nice but we kind of fancy like doing some walks and going to the beaches and mm -hmm. everything like that and this has got a lot more of the kind of stuff that we normally yeah. really enjoy so we're gonna go there hang out there for a little while yeah maybe till thursday if the weather clears before that we'll go before that and hop along the coast afterwards but this is still in the right direction of where we want to go we are over halfway there it's a very short trip and um, we're still under engine which is a little frustrating but we're literally heading to wind and it's about 4.8 knots of wind so i mean we could bear away and have our sails just laughing. It's just, we're just gonna motor there. It's a bit lazy, but just, we're nearly there. But we are really rolly out here. We've, it's calmed down a little bit to be fair since leaving through past the breakwater because when we were going through, oh, I say that, we, I'm kind of just looking forward to a bit less roll. Are you looking forward to a bit less roll? A little bit. Our bay, whiskey was quite rolly and that was down waves, but now we're side on, so it's not the most pleasant trip. So I just contacted the marina on the radio. And they don't speak a word of English, so yeah, I was gonna try and piece together a, a sentence in Spanish, but over the radio too, just I just really feel like we'll just get in there and speak to them and use our phones to translate. But I do need to polish up on my Spanish. Yeah, we meet Tanner off. Nice done. Well done. We're definitely one of the biggest boats here, Zach. Mm. We're missing a trick there. Yeah, he no, needs an engine. Mm. Ones. Yeah. Oh, so we made it into our, I would say berth, but we're just kind of perched on the end pontoon and we're by far the biggest boat in the marina. They've got a limit of 13 metres and we're 12 metres, so we are still okay. But yeah, it was a bit interesting when Zach was coming in because that's the width of the pontoon and goes up there too. But I had to jump and we're really high up and I had to jump onto that, which was just a little bit interesting. But there's a few pontoons over there, but they're more fishing boats and then there's pontoons behind us, but they're all small boats. So we just hopped on the end and actually he came to us and he said, oh, he said, we're absolutely fine here, which is nice. And we went to the office and it's like this little hut in the boatyard over there. He really didn't speak much English, but it was funny because when we went up there, he said, right, the showers in broken English, half Spanish, half English said, they're a bit rubbish. <laughs> But yeah, you get what you pay for and this is exactly what we need. We're off grid anyway, so yeah, happy days. In other marinas, we've only ever been to bigger marinas and there's always an end pontoon, which is kind of secretly reserved for the big boats that obviously need it. And we've always looked at those boats and been like, oh, that's a big boat, that needs an end pontoon. And now we are the big boat on the end pontoon, which is funny. 
There was no way we were getting in any other spot here. <laughs> and we've got a whole pontoon to ourselves. And we've actually got two, because there's one there and there's one there. And the boats are kind of split down the middle here, so yeah, that's funny. Taylor, Taylor's a big girl, girthy girl. There's a few boats that have just gone out. There's a guy rowing out in a sailing boat and they literally get past the breakwater and just turn around and come back in because the swell is pretty big. That's happened twice now in the last like 20 minutes. Someone's in a little boat's gone out, looked around and was like, nope, and come straight back in. Luanco is a little fishing village full of interesting historic landmarks and beautiful beaches. The colourful houses combined with the prominent fishing harbour and the 18th century buildings are quite the contrast in the busy city of Gijón. <laughs> With the bigger swell and higher gusts rolling in, we were super happy to be behind this large breakwater. But enough of admiring the view. Zach's taking me on an adventure and I can't for the life of me guess where. I don't know if you can see, but there's some steps on the little island over there and that's where we're going. Cool. Just to see those steps. Yeah, okay. <laughs> What's on the island, Becca? Well, I've guessed quarry and it's not I guess pond, lake, river. A lake on there would be a bit of a push. I'm surprised lake. you didn't see it from the boat. You could have seen what was on there. Cliff jumping. From the boat. Jumping? No. I don't know. You have to wait and see then. Hmm. Mystery continues. We successfully made it across. A little bit challenging and a little bit wet at times, but we made it across. We got us some stuff on. <laughs> speedy, speedy Spanish crab. You got him. He's got hairy legs. Has he? Yeah, look. Wow. Him. Yeah. One last guess. Uh, steps up. Old steps in the side of the hill. A Roman bath. No. <laughs> a Spanish bath. No. You're closer with that though than you have. A to. well. No. Look behind me. A church. Thing. Wow, this is so cool. It's a chapel. It's an island chapel. People still come here. I don't know. I guess so. I believe this is on the island. Wow. That was like a little beach down there as well. A shower in the in the showers up there and minus the asbestos ceiling and the floors that make you feel like you're gonna fall through them and the mouldy shower curtains actually I think they were better than the showers in Brest and in Gijon put together so that says something we clearly are living a life of luxury <laughs> morning oh it's a cold morning and there's so much dew everything outside i'll show you everything out here is pretty damp but that's okay we'll dry out in the sun later oh, we made crepes last night and haven't washed up and i hate doing that zach has gone for a run and i am gonna work out we haven't worked out a run for about a month now so we're really feeling it so it's time to start <laughs> and getting back into it. And this is the only space that we really have to do indoor workouts. And it only just fits with exercise mat. But it works, where there's a will, there's a way.
Mm. Oh, it is sweaty. But I did it. That's a great feeling. Behind me, over there, is our outboard, which is from 1978 or 19. It's an old. I don't know. It's an old outboard from the 70s and the parts are hard to find and on the end of the prop at the moment there's this uh, plastic like cone shaped nut almost that keeps the prop all on with a split pin in it and at the moment it's got a big crack through it. Looked online to see how much they were and how long they'd take to get here. You can only get them from the States and it'll be about two week turn around to get it over here to Spain so I don't really want to do that and order one of those so what I'm gonna do is just take the whole thing off and epoxy um, the inside of it and hopefully that will hold it for long enough until we are in an area for long enough that I can order something like that and it will actually arrive but for now we're just going to do this and I imagine it'll hold up just fine and also the other parts are really expensive it's about I think it's like 50 pounds for one of these replacement things it's basically just a little bit of plastic so I don't really want to spend that much on something like that so I'm going to try and DIY it myself. This is the prop on here, which is not too bad. And that right there is the issue that I've got at the moment. It's actually spread a little bit since I've last seen it as well. So I definitely want to get that off. Uh, I think it'd be quite easy. What I need to do is take this split pin off. I've got spare, spare split pins like this. So I'm just going to replace that with a new one and then epoxy this all up. And hopefully our prop will never actually come off because I really don't want to lose this thing because this will also be quite hard to find. Oh my gosh. Oh sh That's not good. Might still be able to see, but let me give it a go. This is a bit more. Oh, there we go. Just look at that. This is gonna be fun. What I'm gonna do now is <laughs> these are really broken now. Is I'm gonna go and clean out the inside of these with some acetone, just to make sure the epoxy is a really good surface and clean surface to stick to and then I'm gonna put these back onto the prop, mask and tape them all around and then remove them like that and I know it will still fit on there. Then what I'm gonna have to do is fill it with epoxy whilst trying to keep it out of this center bit here, just filling all the cracks and everything like that. And then once that's all done, I might have to drill out these holes again, but that won't be the end of the world. Um, I'll just do that and then I'll slot it back on and hopefully that will all fit and actually work for a while, so. Fingers crossed it works. Okay, so it's a few days later. I've managed to fix up this nut for the end of the outboard and it's all good now. We actually ended up epoxying all of it, but I just need to drill out the old holes because they're filled with epoxy now. And then put it back in the dinghy. Hopefully it all fits still. It's not quite perfectly round, but the thing is solid now, so it's not going anywhere. There we go. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No. Thanks for watching. Join us next week as we sail further west and have a little cry. Because sailing can be really hard at times. And what's life without a little emotion now and again?